In this particular video, we'll be talking about the Proxmox backup server at the remote location. So let me first of all explain you why we want to do the Proxmox backup at uh, a different Proxmox backup server. For this specific setup, you need to have an additional hardware for the Proxmox backup server, but that backup server will not be used for backing up virtual machines and backing up containers. That will be predominantly used to backup your entire Proxmox backup server. So your Proxmox backup server data store will be backed up to the uh, other Proxmox backup server. That Proxmox backup server can be at the same data center where you just want to safeguard your uh, VMs and containers. You are not dependent on one single Proxmox backup server. You are having another Proxmox backup server for the safe side. Or it could be another strategy where you want to have an off-site backup where you can have an off-site Proxmox backup server and your entire Proxmox backup server can be synchronized to a different location. That is, of course, an ideal way to do that. And I will highly recommend you to use that for production environment because that will safeguard you from any disaster. Now your virtual machines are backed up at remote locations. It is now extremely safe and secure. You are, in fact, having a highly reliable environment. Uh, so then you will have a confidence that whenever there will be any failure of the virtual machine container and even your entire data center at remote location, you have your Proxmox backup server. From there, you can pull all the existing backups and you can restore the virtual machines and that's it. So let's do it step by step. I will show you how to uh, start installing the Proxmox backup server at remote location, how to configure it and how to configure the remote store. So in the existing Proxmox backup server, if you go here to remote, you will see here right now there is no remote location. You can add, of course, the remote Proxmox backup server. But before that, we have to go and install the Proxmox backup server. So let me first of all install it on a different location. I can use it on the same location. And I will also recommend you that first of all, you install it. You run the first synchronization on the same location. For example, if you have terabytes of the backups and now you want to uh, in fact, synchronize it at remote location, it will take longer. So you can do the backups, the first backup you can do at the same location. And the moment it is done, you can send it to remote location, then only the incremental backup will be done. So here I'm on remote location and this particular Proxmox backup server will be sent to the remote location. So I will be again using the same method of doing the installation, the same way you did the installation in the first Proxmox backup server. But this time I'll be quickly doing it, but I will just show you uh, the configuration that I was doing. So it is on a different network. You can see here 10.11.14.100. It has taken the IP address from the DSCP server. But of course, we will be changing the IP address uh, uh, to keep it static IP so that whenever we do any uh, backups, whenever we connect it, so we'll know the IP address and so on. So I will simply click on agree here. Uh, again, it has the same configuration. 32 GB hard disk will be used for the uh, installation, location. And here I will be choosing, I will be sending it to Sydney. So I will be choosing, in fact, the Sydney and Melbourne is the same time zone, but I will be choosing Sydney here. Click next. And I will be choosing the password, croxmox at silkrix.com. So this will be my strategy that one of the Proxmox backup server will be used in Sydney and another will be used in Melbourne so that in case of any disaster, it will be uh, having a remote backup. So this will be psb02 at syncpix.com and here I will be choosing the IP address manually. 14 is the subnet and so I will be using 14.210 for this. We had 210 for 12 also, so 210 for 14 also. So you can have it any IP address, but just for my network uh, addresses, I'm using in this way. So 14.201 will be at Sydney. So uh, 12.201 is in Melbourne. So this way I can configure, click next. This is again the same uh, setup that we have seen and click next. Uh, again, I will be quickly fast forwarding this and uh, I will come back to you. So process is same, of course, for the installation. I will not be repeating the process of doing the configuration and doing the repository configuration for the update and upgrade. I'll be simply taking you directly now to the web user interface where we will be looking at other aspects. 
So I will quickly do the uh, update and upgrade the way we have done it. We will be adding the no subscription repository. We'll update and upgrade. Once it is done, then we'll be coming back here to the Proxmox backup server 2, which is 10.11.14.210. And its port is 8007 for the Proxmox backup server. This is the fresh install of Proxmox backup server, the root and the password. And here you go. So we have now the Proxmox backup server, uh, second Proxmox backup server. So first Prox Proxmox backup server also, I will be opening here, which is 10.11.12.210. And you can see here, two Proxmox backup server, PSB01. PBS01, which is Proxmox Backup Server 1, and PSB02, which is Proxmox Backup Server 2. Of course, you can see this was upgraded. This is not yet upgraded, but I will do that later. Our whole concern is now to configure another uh, user here. I will be in the second node, I will be configuring the user, and I will give it a name, for example, Remote uh, Sync. So this user will be for remote sync and I will be using the Proxmox backup server authentication and password. And here I will be adding this user. And now user is added. I will not uh, be touching this user for the time being. I will be going here to the uh, storage and disks and I will be using this new disk, which is STA. In this case also it is 500 GB. And I will be creating a ZFS again, ZFS pool, create ZFS. Choose this as PBS dash backup will give a same name it's fine you can have the same name click uh, the disk that you want to use create the moment you create it it will just uh, do the formatting it will wipe the disk and the disk will be available here in the data store now the disk is available in the data store i will simply go here back to the permissions and permissions to what permission this could be even your admin permission also it could be backup permission also it could be various other permissions so because this is related to the data store also you want to give the access to this data store also so that remote user can access this uh, then you will have to give the remote sync job also and all these permissions can be given so i'll be clicking on the user permission i will choose the data store which is pbs backup and the remote user will be remote sync user that we have created will be giving him first of all permission to the data store admin and first permission is given here so we have now configured this so we'll be coming back here of course, for this particular Proxmox backup server, we are not going to create the remote. This will be remote for the main Proxmox backup server. So this is the one that will be sent to a different location or to a different rack or to a different uh, uh, data center or to a different city or it could be different country. So depending upon how you want to use it. So this is a remote, but remote for first backup server. So in first backup server, we'll go into configuration. In configuration, we'll go to remote. We'll click on add and we will give the remote ID. For example, as I mentioned, it is Sydney. So I will be using Sydney here. So remote is Sydney, main is in Melbourne. So that is fine. So you can use a fully qualified domain name also. Uh, but I will be using the IP address because we'll be connecting this through a VPN and the VPN at remote location will have 10.11.14.210. This will be the IP address of this. Authentication, again, authentication will be the one which we created. I will go to the user, access control user. It was remote sync. I will copy this entire user ID here. I will come back here, paste here, and give it a password. And here, fingerprint, again, I will go to the second backup server and go to the dashboard, click on fingerprint, copy, come back to the first Proxmox backup server and paste it here. So we had to get the fingerprint of the remote server here. So remote server was, IP address was this, 10.11.14.210. So we give 10.11.14.210. We created the user which was here. We created the password which was here. And of course, Sydney is uh, the remote ID. You can also have PBS02 and it will be Sydney. So that can also be done, but we can do, for example, PBS02, that is fine. I'll click add. So the moment you click add, so the remote server is added right now, uh, but it is not doing anything. It is just added. So second server will not have any information of this because there is, uh, we have not added anything here, but this authentication was given to the remote uh, Proxmox backup server. Even you can have the uh, Proxmox backup server for multiple Proxmox backup server. This can be used, but we will be doing the backup of this 
Proxmo backup server to the remote location. And how it can be done? Now we have to go to the sync job actually. So we have created only the Proxmox uh, remote site here. We have not added anything here. You can just edit, you can remove, you can do anything here. But if I go back here to Proxmox backup here, PBS backup, you can see here sync jobs. So sync job is related to remote in fact. So content is of course your content which are verified. These are the VM backups which are from your uh, Proxmox uh, virtual environment. And uh, you have now sync jobs here. And then you can verify the jobs also. And then you can see various options. But we'll first of all do the sync job. Now what is sync job? Sync job means that if you want to send the content, of course, this is your content. If you want to send this content to remote location, you will push these files or push these, this data to the remote location. But in case you have installed a new one, new Proxmox backup server and you want to bring all those backups which were done here, so you will do pull job for that. So I'll show you that how it can be done. So if you go to sync jobs, you will click on add and you can see here add pull sync job or add push sync job. So even you can go to the remote location and you can pull here. You can go here to the PBS backup. You can do to sync job. You can pull the job from here. So you can pull the job from the remote site. But we won't be doing that. We will come here to the uh, PBS 01. We'll click on add. We'll push that to the other location. So here you have to type the low remote location. You have to select the remote location which we have added here. You will select the uh, target data store. You can see PBS backup is available because we gave the access to the data store. You can see here that we gave data store admin access which means that uh, PBS can be added here. So I, I did this. So first uh, role that we have created, we gave the uh, permission to the user to be to have access to the data store. Now the external, uh, the remote data store is linked here. I'm able to add the remote data store here. What we have done, we have added the remote data store. For hourly, all the backups which are here, these will be automatically moved to the remote location. Uh, I will, for the sake of this tutorial, I will not do hourly. I will do uh, maybe every Saturday. So I suppose we'll do it in this way. Now. The data has not gone yet to the remote location. So nothing has moved there. Uh, so in secondary location, if you go here to the data store and if you go to the content, of course, nothing is available here. So I will just go back to the primary location where we have added the uh, remote sync job. So I go to content here. This content is not only the two batches of job you can see here. This has got uh, two GB each. This VM has got uh, 60 GB each and so on. So maybe I will just uh, delete these backups, so which will be 100, just for the sake of this tutorial to make it fast. So VM ID is VM slash 100. So I will be removing the VM uh, backup here. Now it is only three backups here. Maybe I can remove uh, these backups also. Uh, yes and yes so we will have only one content here so one content is already here for vm 107 and one thing which we have seen this is the proxmox backup server one on the primary location and this is remote location of course till now nothing has come here if i just refresh this there is nothing available uh, for the sake of this tutorial of course as i mentioned this is the content which is going to be synced to the remote location which is only single 1 GB, 2 GB. Of course, once I run this job, it will take long time if you have multiple backups done, multiple virtual machines done. So for the first time, it will take time. So sync job is already configured. So I will just run this now and we'll see the status of this. What has happened? It has found one group to sync. One is total and queue notification is done and sync job. I have got the notification also. It was a sync remote. PBS data store PBS backup was successful. Synchronization was successful. If I go here to PSP01, of course, from here we configured. And if I go to the second backup server here, let me now refresh this. You will see here that the backup is available here as well. So this way we created the backup on the primary site. 
and we had the sync job which has already completed automatically and it has sent the data or pushed the data to the remote location this remote location can be anywhere it could be on the same uh, city with a different in a different data center or it could be a different rack depending upon how you want to configure maybe you want to configure within the same uh, data center you want to have multiple backup servers uh, one can be primary another can be pushed and then you can have uh, another one at remote location here also in uh, the sync job is completed here we can also do the verification job also which means that we can verify whatever has been backed up every day and re-verify after every 30 days so we'll do this job also so it will keep on verifying whatever backups are done so it is saying it is job is completed so it will keep on verifying it also whatever sync job is done it will do the verification and then also you can get the email that the uh, verify uh, job was successfully completed so this way you can see it and if you if i go to options here in options you can see the notification use global setting or use the send email send mail so who will be recipient recipient will be the local user or you can of course choose whatever user whom you want to send the low, uh, notification and then the verification job error job so that i don't want to get so many emails on daily basis or hourly basis sync jobs i will see error only clone job i will send again on errors only by default it is error and uh, garbage collection i will also say on errors so this is the notification that you want to send and verify the new snapshots uh, when the new snapshot is uh, created in this uh, data store so when you want to verify it I, I want to verify it immediately once the job is added and here is the maintenance mode in case you want to have a maintenance of the uh, uh, server so you can keep it on read only or you can even you know, do it offline so i'm not maintaining it right now so it's fine so then is the tuning options in case you want to configure it so everything is default right now but you can of course configure based on your needs and requirements so this is what the proxmox backup server is all about so we configured the proxmox backup server we installed the proxmox backup server of course in the first Pro Pro proxmox backup server we configured it we created the user we created the data store we assigned the permissions to the data store we created the user and we gave the access and then we configured the backup in the proxmox backup server we went to the data center we went to the backup we configured the backup then finally we created a new backup uh, proxmox backup server we did the installation step by step installation we followed we did the configuration the way we did for the first proxmox backup server then in first proxmox backup server we configured the remote we added the remote location of course in remote we added the user id and we gave the permissions and once the remote location was added we went to the data store and we synchronized the data store uh, from the primary location to the secondary location and then we validated the sync job we configured the basic sync and so on now everything is completed we are now ready to move our proxmox to the production environment this was all about adding the proxmox backup server into your virtualization environment in fact proxmox backup server is extremely important because this is a native backup technology of the proxmox virtual environment i will highly recommend it in production environment i'm using it and it has been years in fact since i started using proxmox so i have never faced any problems this is working fine proxmox backup server is the technology that i will recommend of course uh, when it comes to backup I will not recommend you to rely on only one technology you can have mix and match of multiple technologies depending upon the criticality of your applications or your guest uh, machines uh, whatever machines or whatever containers are critical you have to ensure that they are regularly backed up and you have to follow the policy which is gfs which i mentioned earlier uh, earlier so if you follow these policies then you will be having a good backup strategy and restore so having a disaster recovery plan is extremely important but having a business continuity plan together with the disaster recovery is also very important so when you do a backup you need to ensure that backup can be restored in case of any disaster and if it is not verified then it means that you are at risk so to avoid the risk you have to have the uh, backup strategy in place you have to have the proxmox backup servers in place you have to have the remote backup as well 
So this was all about the Proxmox backup server. This was all about the disaster recovery plan. Let us continue to next video now and look at other aspects of Proxmox virtual environment.